our usage of data, our usage of the internet and technology is not going away. I mean, how many of you have trouble putting down your iPhones or your iPads and have potentially been, you know, talked to by family members about your inability to concentrate on what they're saying versus whatever it is you're looking at on your phone? And so, and I'm sure all of us have had those conversations with our kids. And so, uh, so this is not going away. And it's actually really staggering how much this is not going away. And so the percentage of the world's data that was created in the last two years, anybody have a guess? 90% of the world's data was created in just the last two years alone. Okay, so we are creating data at a skyrocketing exponential rate. I mean, there, this is just not going away. How many devices will be connected to the internet by 2020? Anybody have a guess? 50 billion. 50 billion, so you're a little off, but it was a good guess. Um, so connected to the internet, if we think about devices, most of us think that that's our phone, our iPad, our computer, right? But one of the things you have to think about is that as we march towards the internet of things, things are going to be connected to the internet. Okay, things like your Keurig coffee maker, reporting back to the Keurig mothership about how much coffee you drink and what kind you like and how often the filter has to be changed and so on and so forth. So, I mean, it's some interesting data that's being collected as these devices get smart, okay? Your dishwasher is going to be connected to the internet. Uh, think about a Fitbit, okay? Anybody here have a Fitbit? Okay, a Fitbit by itself doesn't use a lot of connectivity, but 100 million Fitbits do and 100 million Keurigs do. And so think about the connectivity needs that are gonna to need to go up at your home and at all of our businesses. So if you look at uh, eBay, one of our clients uh, out in Nevada, they have never deleted anything, ever. Since the day they started the company, they've been collecting data on all of their auctions. And so they have all the archives of all the auctions they've ever run sitting in a massive uh, storage array in Las Vegas. And so just to give you an idea of how much data that is, the Library of Congress estimates that the entire written works of man from the dawn of time until today in every language combined is about 50 petabytes of data. Just eBay's archives alone, that's 100 petabytes of data. Twice the written works of man from the dawn of time until today. That's only one company. I mean, I don't know what companies you guys work for, but how, many, how much data does every one of your companies have? And so why doesn't eBay delete all that stuff? Because all the physical devices that it takes them to run all the archives, it's about a billion dollars worth of hardware. And so a lot of people have said they should just delete that. Why spend all the money on storing the archives? Well, here's why. All of that data has value if they can turn it into information. Every brand in the world wants to know what eBay knows about their brand. Toyota knows what happened to the car the first time it sold, but eBay can potentially tell them what happened to that car the second and third time it was sold. Anyone in here ever have an MRI? Anybody? Okay. So what happens when you get an MRI? Your doctor and your radiologist will look at your MRI and compare that against every MRI that he or she has ever seen that's residing in the memories of, the, of that person's brain and compare it and contrast it with what that person has learned, that doctor or that radiologist. But what if, when you get an MRI, it could be uploaded into an artificial intelligence engine that could compare it against two million MRIs of the exact same thing? And say, well, for a man you know, between 60 and 70 uh, in this area of the country, this is what the typical diagnosis was, and this was the best source of treatment. It makes, it makes diagnosis more accurate. It makes treatment more effective. And it, the insurance companies are certainly a fan of all of those things. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We're very passionate about keeping the arts in STEM. Because without the arts, STEM has no soul. We have to make sure that we are designing things with a form that is, that is pleasing to us as humans. Otherwise, nobody's going to want to use it. And so that's one of the reasons why arts is so important, but it also makes sure that people are critical thinkers and that they are creative thinkers. And so that's why we're huge supporters of Art Prize here in Michigan. Net neutrality is a very controversial topic depending on who you're talking to. And of course, California just passed that law. And so we're going to see, though, uh, I think net neutrality is going to be in and be out and be in and be out. Depending on which politician gets into office, I think it's going to continually change. And I don't think we're, we're going to get locked into anything here for a while. You should value privacy a lot, but you shouldn't expect a ton of it if you use social media. But privacy is really something that is managed by you with your own personal choices as to how much you put out there. How much do you put online? But it's only, you're only, you can only control it to such an extent because if you drive a car, if you go to the doctor's office, if you use a bank, 
there's a lot of organizations out there that have online information about you. And if you're using any kind of a bank at all, it could be hacked. If you're buying anything online, that could be hacked. You know, so yes, you should value your privacy tremendously, but there's only so much control you have over that at this point. And so I, I also counsel all the kids that I speak to with beware of what you put on social media. Whatever's on your resume better exactly line up with what you look like on social media.